Okay, folks, so <clears throat> this is uh, chapter two from your textbook, uh, Introduction to Enterprise Systems. And although this is chapter two, this is part of your week one reading, the introductory week reading, because it gives you an insight into what enterprise systems are and um, essentially gives you an idea of what SAP is. So uh, look at the learning objectives, the benefits of enterprise systems, what role enterprise systems support, um, the different categories of data within SAP ERP, which is the most popular enterprise system in the world, SAP, and uh, sort of touch upon the reporting. Again, like I said, um, all the videos that you will be watching, um, I may be skipping slides, I may be skipping contents just to keep the length of the video, uh, uh, the video length uh, to, to, to a re reasonable amount of time. Um, the I will be the slides that I'll be focusing on uh, during this uh, video. I would want to make sure that you take away these uh, concepts from those slides from the chapter. Enterprise systems. There are um, they basically allow an enterprise-wide uh, system to be built into one single IT system, so that each business fu function, business process that we talked about in chapter one can communicate on a real-time, uh, synchronous or seamless basis. SAP is the most widely used, widely popular um, ERP or enterprise system in the world. Um, there are two architectures on enterprise system, the client server and the service oriented. The client server, it's a three-layer architecture where um, at the presentation layer, this is the client, then you have the application layer and the data layer. So this is the main server uh, at the top layer, and then at the middle tier, middle layer is the application layer, and then the, the final layer or the client layer is called the presentation layer. Uh, Service-oriented architecture uh, mostly refers to the web service architecture and it can connect multiple uh, web applications uh, via web services. ESP, enterprise resource planning software ERP, popular known as ERP in, or e ES systems, enterprise systems focus on internal operations of, a, uh, of an organization and they integrate these uh, key functional areas. SAP, there's a lot of uh, SAP modules. Now, what I mean by that is um, each of these that you're looking at, human capital, financial, this, each of these are separate ERP modules. So, for example, if you're a company and you want to uh, implement SAP, you could go in for each of these modules, um, like out of these uh, eight, you can select any one or any two or any number depending on how much investment you want to make, how much, what is the requirement. So for example, if you're a company that um, wants to uh, have the finance module for SAP, so you will be basically going for the SAP financial module which includes all these different components. Uh, your company wants to go in for the um, SAP's uh, sales and customer service module, which will include these components of the SAP module. Okay, like I said, these are different SAP modules. Uh, you'll be over the course of the semester. You'll be dealing with production planning module in SAP. You'll be doing materials management. You'll be doing sales maintenance, sales and distribution. I'm sorry. You won't be doing plant maintenance. You will be do, doing project systems. Project systems is actually week eight, or the final week. You will not be doing quality management module. You'll be doing definitely financial accounting module and the management accounting and controlling module. Module. You will not be dealing with human resource, neither business intelligence. As a matter of fact, uh, if you for those who are interested in human resource or business intelligence, there are other courses that are offered that are exclusively focused on these two modules. Um, so basically, out of the ten modules mentioned here, you will you'll be doing with one, two, three, four, five, and six. Six out of the ten. 
So that's why this course is called the ERP overview. Basically, it tries to cover as many modules as possible in ERP. As a matter of fact, these six modules that you will be dealing with over the course of the semester are the most popular or the most widely used SAP modules across the board. Um, there are SAP's application suites. Um, The SAP architecture, I'm not going to go into this, uh, just there's uh, material in the textbook that you can refer to. Um, SAP NetWeaver um, is, a, is a tool set that, is, that can be integrated with the SAP modules and it allows additional um, functionalities to the SAP module. Now, one of the key things that I want you to take away from this chapter is the data within the SAP module, which is basically three types of data, the organizational data, the master data, and the transaction data. So what is organizational data? It defines the structure of the organization and enterprise, includes legal entities, plant storage areas, sales organization, and profit centers. This kind of data rarely changes. Um, at the top of the organizational level or organizational data is the client, which is the highest organizational level. It represents the enter enterprise of the organization. Then you have, after that, you have the company code, and then uh, you have the plant. So you see these three levels here, and each is defined, so make sure you read these, what they are, and how they are linked with one another. This is GBI company, which I mentioned in Chapter 1, Business Process, Introduction to Business Process. GBI, or Global Bike Incorporated, is the company that you will be dealing with when you will be working on your hands-on SAP assignment, which starts from week 2. <clears throat> so, this is the structure, the arc structure of the GBI company. You see that this is, at the, this is the client GBI enterprise within which it has company code, one within U.S., the other in Germany and each company code has its plant. Now, uh, just to give you uh, information, company code uh, is the, bay, the way company codes are categorized is by geographical area. So within US, it's one company code outside of US, where it's just Germany, France, Paris, Mexico, etc. It'll be a different company code. <coughs> Master data, it's uh, the second type of data that is, uh, that is a part of your SAP. Um, data structure. It's a long-term data that concerns, um, that deals with customer data, vendor data, material data, also includes general data, across company codes, financial data, and area-specific data. <coughs> material data, material master data, uh, could involve numerous processes. Um, it could be based on, depending on uh, process, material type, organizational element, material master data, the sources could come from these different uh, areas. Then, uh, so again, this GBI product structure, uh, you look at this, uh, again, this is specific to GBI. Um, you have the bicycles, you and you're dealing with bicycles and the accessories, then you have the two different types of bicycles, within which then you have another uh, type of uh, materials linked to these, each of these different types of bicycles, same thing with the accessories. Transaction data, the third type of data. Uh, data, it's used during the execution of processes or steps. Uh, it requires, obviously, our data, master data, and situational data. Example is a sales order creation, which is a transaction. So these are the various sources from which you can get transaction data. It could be coming from organizational level data, it could be coming from master data, it could be situational data. This is a, how a typical purchase order looks like when it's created in um, your uh, SAP. So a purchase order meaning this is something that um, your um, customer has basically given you. And this purchase order, if you remember the steps in the, the, the uh, uh, fulfillment process, 
uh, it is going to be uh, created, uh, converted into a sales order. So it obviously it has to contain the information about the customer that bought it. So this is the one that is your customer. This is where it's being shipped to. These are the items. This is the total amount and all that, okay? So purchase order typically, obviously, will have these information. Uh, who bought it? What was the purchase order number? What's the destination? What are the items? Um, what are the products that have been ordered? What is the total value of the purchase order, etc.? Then um, the, 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 the remaining slides deals with reporting. Reporting is an essential part of uh, having an SAP system in your organization. Uh, reporting allows you to report, um, to collect data, report the data that is relevant. So for uh, a company that wants to keep a track of their sales and report that to their um, chief sales officer, obviously it is an obvious choice to have a reporting system in place. <clears throat> Uh, types of reporting systems that work with SAP. Um, um, there are many, uh, one, many reporting um, tools that, have been, that can be integrated with SAP. Um, of course, there are analytics tools that also can be integrated with SAP uh, software. There are many reporting options uh, that are that SAP. When you use SAP, SAP allows you to uh, allows for you many reporting options. Uh, and this just talking about the components of the reporting information structure. Again, uh, although reporting is something that you should know, uh, however. It is not one of the key things that I want you to focus on. One of the things that I want you to focus on from this chapter is to understand basically uh, what an enterprise system is and uh, the three types of data that um, SAP um, is dealing with the organizational data, the master data, and the uh, transactional data. Uh, every chapter from uh, now on, week two onwards, uh, subsequent week onwards, uh, will be on, on a separate uh, business process. And with that, uh, most probably a separate ERP module. And when we talk about a separate ERP module, we will be first looking into the data, types of data, the, the master data, the arc data, and the transactional data. Um, linked with that specific business process and that specific um, ERP module. What I also want you to take away from this chapter is the 10 core uh, business processes that ERP supports. Um, having said that, what I mean by that is I'm talking about um, one of the very first slides. These are the key business processes and like I said, well, uh, the six out of these t ten key business processes you will be learning about, and you will be looking, you will be working on hands-on exercises using SAP to see how SAP facilitates these business processes. Okay. With that said, um, again, like I um, like I always want to reiterate, I'm skipping slides uh, which are not the key points in the syllabus. I'm focusing on the slides that are key concepts that I want you to take away from this chapter. Okay. With that said, thank you.